Today we're breaking you into tech sales because I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to do and say in order to dominate your SDR interview and land the job that you're going for. I've spent over six years in enterprise software sales. I spent two of those as a manager conducting well over a hundred of these interviews and hired many people. So I know exactly what these people are looking to hear. And I'm gonna make sure you're focused on what's actually important because there's a lot of noise out there that causes people to overthink and overprepare, gives them interview anxiety. I'm gonna make sure you're laser focused on what you actually need to know to land the job so let's get into it. All right, first, you want to remember that you're interviewing with a real person here. These managers, they have their own goals and aspirations, and then they're thinking about who they want to bring on their team, who's going to make their life easier. Is this person going to be coachable? Are they going to help me hit my attainment? Just like when you sell, you're selling to a real person. Same thing when you're interviewing. And one key thing to note is that when these managers are hiring, especially for these entry-level SDR roles, they're generally looking for character traits not hard skills. Most people that get hired don't have extensive cold calling or even sales experience and definitely not technical experience. They're looking for certain character traits. I've seen it as a manager. I've seen two people get hired, one who did have extensive cold calling experience, but maybe not the right character traits and the other who had zero experience and they have lots of good character traits and I've seen this more than once, the people without the character traits very quickly surpass the people with the experience. This is really what they're looking for in the SDR role. I'll touch on what those are later, but as a sneak peek, it's hard work, coachability, and that you're a team player. The other thing you wanna be demonstrating to the manager is that you showed up prepared. So you know why you're here. You understand this is a sales role. You know why you wanna go into sales. You know why you're specifically applying for this role at this company. Because your level of preparation for the interview is gonna say a lot about how you're gonna prepare for the day-to-day -day on the job. The other thing you wanna demonstrate is that you're self-motivated. So when that manager is not in the room, you're gonna be doing the right things, working hard, up-leveling your skill set. And again, it goes back to thinking through the manager's lens. You wanna present yourself as the candidate that's gonna make their life easier and help them, their organization, and the rest of their team hit the goals and KPIs that are set out for them. All right, the next topic is what to research when you're preparing for these interviews. A lot of candidates way overthink, and it's not their fault, it's due to the noise out there on the internet, they way overthink think what they need to prepare when in reality there's just a few basic things you need to prepare that are going to put you above 90% of candidates. The first one being what is the main basic value proposition of the company? You can typically find this out just by going on their website. It's going to be clearly spelled out everywhere and a lot of them sound the same. Everyone is the one-stop shop. Everyone is reducing manual workloads, using spreadsheets, consolidating tools. Just look at the language they're using for what their value proposition is and be able to demonstrate you've done that research. And again, that only takes like 30 seconds, but it's going to do a lot to demonstrate your level of preparation for the interview. A way to take it a step further is to go on their customer success page. Most companies have one and just learn one customer success stories. I've interviewed so many people and I can count on one hand the amount of people that have been able to do this. You can use this throughout the interview, whether you're asking a question, you're talking about the value proposition of the company, just point out that you were looking at their customer success page and ask a question about one of their success stories. The third basic thing you want to know, again, this will be on the website, is who are the common buyers buyer personas that you sell into. If you know the target buyer personas and you know how the basic value proposition of the company applies to those personas, you're going to be ahead of most candidates that I've seen throughout my career. And then the last thing you want to just research quickly, and I'll touch on later why this is important, is just do a basic LinkedIn search of whoever you're interviewing. What was their career path? Did they go from SDR to account executive to then going to SDR manager? Did they rise up throughout the company? Were they a professional hire? I'll tell you why this is important in the end of the video, but this will cover most of your bases when it comes to doing research for the interview. So next is the meat and potatoes, what we all probably came here for, which are the key moments during the interviews, the key questions you're gonna get asked, the key answers, the most important times to demonstrate these character traits that a manager is gonna be looking for. So a lot of interviews are 30 minutes, 40 sometimes they go as long as an hour but what I'm here to tell you is that the first two to three minutes are by far the most important part of that interview regardless of how long it is if you believe in the power of first impressions which is basically a psychological truth at this point I think it's basically been proven that people are susceptible to this then you better believe the first two to three minutes the first answers that you give are gonna be the most important ones creating that first impression in the managers head so you want to take control in these first two to three minutes and again, demonstrate your preparation. We're gonna be going back to that theme throughout the whole video. 
Your opening answers are very important and you wanna answer two key questions. Why do you wanna go into sales and why do you wanna do so at XYZ company? The opening question will typically revolve around this. They might actually ask you directly, so why do you wanna go into sales? Why do you wanna work for X company? It can also sound like, so what led you to the interview today? Or tell me about yourself. And this is your opportunity to knock it out of the park. They're essentially saying, sell yourself, show me what you got. This is your opportunity to take control and win the interview in that first two to three minutes. So you don't want to use this time to actually tell them about yourself. I know that would be great if they want to know about you. There'll be plenty of time for that later. You don't want to use this type of answer to talk about your skiing hobby or that you like to travel. You want to, yes, you can give them a brief background of where you came from, where you've previously worked, when you went to school, what you studied, but then you very quickly want to tie in what led you to the interview today. Why do you think you want to go into sales? What character traits about yourself make you believe that you're going to be a good fit for this role? And what led you to this specific company. Tech sales is great. You don't want to be selling newspapers. It's important to be in the right industry. Tech sales has a bright future ahead of it. It's a massive and growing industry. But why this specific company? Be able to call out what about this company and their value proposition is the reason you think it's positioned well to succeed. Because being in the right industry is great, but you want to be on the right horse in the right industry. And I think a good answer for why sales revolves around sharing why you're excited about a performance-based career, because that's what sales is. That's different about sales than most other careers is that the harder you work, the more effort you put in, the more you up-level your skills, the more you can advance from both a career standpoint and an income standpoint. And other qualities you wanna be highlighting in that answer, and honestly, all the other answers throughout the questions they ask you during the interview, are the three character traits that I think you can't go wrong with. I think any manager, this is what I used to look for, and I think any manager who finds a candidate with these three tra traits, it's a slam dunk candidate in their eye. And those three are that you are a hard worker, that you're coachable, like you're someone who can take feedback and apply it and grow and get better, and that you're a team player. When you do get better, you start succeeding. You're gonna help the others on the rest of the team because you believe there's room for everyone to succeed. Again, manager lens. If they're gonna hire someone who's gonna make their life easier, if they coach you up, you take the feedback, you get really good, you can help other people when they're not in the room. That's exactly who they're looking for and those are the types of people who promote to the account executive role. And beyond just these three characteristic traits, you wanna have three examples, three stories that you can call on. These are gonna help you throughout the interview because you can use them throughout a variety of questions you might get asked. You can't possibly prepare for every single question you're gonna get asked, but they're generally going to be structured looking for these three traits. So you want three examples either through school, prior work experience, things like that, where you can demonstrate where you were a hard worker, a time you took feedback and applied it, and a time that you worked well in a group to achieve a certain outcome. Because the SDR role is very much a team sport. Yes, you work with your manager, you have other team members, but you're also aligned to an account executive or executives. There's lots of other internal stakeholders, solutions engineers, marketing, operations. It's a team sport. So you want to be highlighting these three things in your opening answer and then in pretty much every question throughout the interview. And then the last key moment is going to be the cold call role play. I think this is an area where people psych themselves out so much. I've done so many of these almost all of them aren't good, and that's not the candidate's fault. It's hard to do a mock cold call. It's hard to imitate a cold call, ring, ring, ring. It's just so different than when you actually get someone live. Really what they wanna see is that you prepared something. Like you're not just stumbling over your words because it's pretty, in most interviews, it's a common expectation that you'll have to do this. So you more just wanna demonstrate you came prepared and really what the role play is about is to find whether you're coachable because they're probably gonna give you some form of feedback. Like, hey, ask this question next time or don't do this, do that, let's run it back. And then if you can just take the feedback and apply it, they're gonna be like, okay, this is someone I can work with. So mentally, that's what you wanna understand really what the role of the cold call role play is, is to see if you're coachable. And if you watch my other videos, you can take my value statement framework and use that for your interview. They'll probably give you some feedback on it, like, hey, try asking this question rather than going straight into asking for time. And then just do that on the interview because you wanna do what the manager's looking for on the interview. They're ultimately the ones hiring you. So that covers most bases for the actual interview, but we have one section left, and this is arguably the most important section. Beyond just the first two to three minutes, that's the most important. I would say this is a very close second, and it's in the end when the manager says, do you have any questions for me? 
Don't be the candidate that just says, nope, I'm good. What I say is you wanna have at least five prepared, but don't ask more than three generally. You can have these written out too. You don't have to have them memorized. If you, the interview's on Zoom, it's pretty easy. Just have it written out on a notepad, or you can just write them down before coming in. It's fine to tell the manager, hey, yeah, I wrote some down. They're not gonna knock you for that. But the reason I say only ask three is because generally the, the questions come with about five minutes left in the interview. So if you're asking all five, you're probably gonna go over and in the manager's head, whether it's fair or not, they're probably gonna say, oh, is this what this person's gonna be like on the job? Are they just gonna pepper me with questions all day? So I say have three good questions prepared that demonstrate your level of preparation. Use these questions to your advantage. And I'm gonna give you some good examples here. You can steal these. So the first question you could ask is, what do you need most on your team? What are you looking for most in an SDR? Again, manager's lens, and based on whatever they tell you, just emphasize that that's exactly what you'll bring to the team. So if they're like, I need someone who's gonna hit the phones hard, you can be like, yep, that's what I'm ready to do. I'm ready to show up early, stay late, I'm committed to this role, I'm someone who's gonna be a team leader when it comes to dials, and that's exactly what I'm looking to bring to the team. Something like that. Next question you can steal is, what are the most common characteristics that you see in successful SDRs at X company. There's also a side benefit to this question is you kind of want to make sure you have a good manager on your hands here too. And if they can't describe like, yes, it's one, two, three, here's what makes a successful rep, you might be like, eh, that's a warning sign. But based on, again, whatever they tell you, what those common traits are, just tell them that's what you're gonna bring to their team, get them excited. A third good question is, I've done X, Y, Z to prepare, what else should I be doing to make sure that I ramp up and roll and succeed as quickly as possible? This is way better than a common question I was asked as a manager, which is, what should I be doing to prepare? It's not a bad question, but you're missing out on an opportunity to tell them, I've done this, this, and this. I've been researching the company website. I've been reading these books. What else should I be doing to make sure I'm prepared? That just tells the manager like, man, this person came ready to go. A fourth good question to ask, and I alluded to it in the beginning of the video that you wanna study the interviewer's career path, is to just ask them about it. Say, hey, I noticed you went from SDR to account executive, you pivoted to management. What made you wanna make that switch? And why do you enjoy doing so at X company? And you can tell them, I'm obviously focused on the SDR role first and making sure I master that and giving it my all. But I also like to think about what my career opportunity is three years from now. And this just demonstrates so many things. It demonstrates that you're excited about a sales career, that you were able to do research just like you would on the job. You were able to do research on the prospect, which is the manager in this case, and ask a good targeted question to them. It's a really good sign. And then the fifth, which is kind of a question that a lot a lot of reps miss this step is to close them and it doesn't need to be anything fancy you can just finish saying thank you for the time today I guess my last question is based on the discussion today do you think I would be a good fit for the SDR role on your team or at X company and if so what are the next steps if you've nailed the rest of this stuff a lot of managers will just start gushing right there and tell you yeah I think you would be a great fit Others will keep it closer to the chest. I wouldn't take that as a bad sign, but just something very simple like that. Don't overthink this again. You don't have to get yourself all riled up. Just say, based on our conversation, do you think I'd be a good fit for the SDR role at X company or on your team? And if so, what are the next steps here? And one last thing to tie the bow on all of this is to follow up with them over email as soon as you can after the interview, ideally within the first 30 minutes, because a lot of people wait till the end of the day to do this. And a lot of managers have to make the decision right then and there or within an hour or so whether they're gonna hire that candidate or not so you want to have something pre-prepared and here's the template you simply again doesn't need to be fancy thank them for the time that day recap what you learned so you've probably took a few notes throughout the interview and learned some stuff you maybe didn't going into it recap what you learned about the role like what you took away from the conversation reiterate why you think you're a good fit largely because you're a hard worker, you're coachable, and you're a team player that's gonna add a lot of value to their organization and tell them you're looking forward to the next steps in the process. I'd say thank them, reiterate, and next steps. You can have that teed up and then just plug in the notes that you took away and you can send that thing off within 15 to 30 minutes. So my experience, these are the most important things to focus on to land an SDR job in tech sales. And if you're looking to break into tech sales and want more hands-on guidance, go to the pinned comment below. The Higher Levels course community has helped hundreds of people break in and land the tech sales jobs that they're going for. And our goal is to give you options and help guide you to the right role and the right company to set yourself up for a career in tech sales. So hope to see you in there. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and I'll see you on the next one.